Welcome to Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. My name is Talib Jassir, founder and CEO of Afros and Audio Podcast Festival, the first two-day conference for and by Black independent podcast creatives and audio professionals. I'm excited to spotlight 28 outstanding indie podcast creatives who answered the call to be a part of this series. Today, my guest is Jeannie Dawkins. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, let's jump in. So first, we'll talk about the parent and cipher in a moment, but tell the folks a little bit about yourself. So I am Jeannie Dawkins, also known as Latifah Dawkins, and I am an author, international speaker, and podcaster. And I'm a CEO of the Parenting Cipher business. So it's not just a podcast. And I also would like to say for everyone, if you have a podcast, you have a business, therefore you are a CEO. Put the hat on proudly. Make sure you put on every damn thing, okay? You're not an entrepreneur because no one's going to give you any money for that. So um, I have um, four children who have various diagnoses. Um, Autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, I like to say all the disses, okay? So because of that, when I first became a parent and I started getting these diagnoses, I was like, first I was rebuking the devil. Then I leaned in and I learned about being a Black parent advocate. It is different. Um, as well as being in the spaces with white people who actually have their own community, their conversations are different from ours. And it's a disservice that we don't actually know how to hold people accountable for servicing our children. So I created the podcast, one, to support parents with one self-advocacy. I'm not talking about teaching your child. I'm talking about yourself, right? Entrepreneurship, because one of the biggest difficulties I had was where am I going to get the money for that? That being extra tutoring, extra therapy, you know, what does that look like? as well as holistic care, um, family connection. When a child's diagnosed, it's not just them who's getting diagnosed. It's a holistic thing. So it's not like the one child, you have to stop doing A, B, C, D. It should be something that's across the board, as well as checking in with yourself as a parent. So on the Parent and Cypher, we bring in people who are servicing the children, as well as telling you what education you should look for. Um, when I do my solos, I'm talking about the education system. One thing about the show is we're looking at things through a lens from a cultural perspective, the Black experience. So, you know, we're uncandid. Like, there's no, we don't talk about that. I mean, one of my very first interviews, um, I realized that as a Black parent, and this is a Black person, I do a lot of, shh, we don't talk about that. We don't do that disempowering myself and I believe I'm all the way woke but some things are taught so a lot of times on my show we're we're talking about those things we're talking about those things that you know we know is inherent in us as a culture but we don't really talk about it we know that we feel shaky boots as a parent sometimes people come at us wrong are they coming at us wrong or do we already feel some kind of way because we're overwhelmed with all of the pieces so that's what the parent cipher is about. It's about pulling all those things together so that, you know, you could be an empowered parent. You know, someone comes at you wrong, you have the empowerment to say, okay, I'm not going to cut you out because I don't believe in that. Instead, you come back empowered and you're using the verbiage that they're using. They, people are never ready for that. That be it Black people and white people. And when we talk about on the show, we also talk about that, you know, it could be someone looks just like us but they're socialized and they don't know they socialized. Let's be honest. I was socialized a whole 150%. And I ain't, I was like, no, but my kids brought it to my attention. So they don't mean no harm, but you know what they say, hell's paved with good intention. So uh, you have to know what's going on. All right. I appreciate that uh, context and that perspective about the podcast. Let's step back a bit. When did you start it? Why did you start it? Why the name? Let's go with that. So, oh man. So my business, my official business is actually Jeannie Dawkins LLC. But when I started the, and I had another podcast called Confidently Parenting with Jeannie Dawkins in like 2018. 
But when I came back in 2020, I feel like it was almost like COVID-ish. And I'm like, you know, as parents, we have to create our own cipher. And that's like 360 degrees of understanding of what's going on with our children and ourselves, as well as like, you know, the word cipher has different meanings. You know, if you look at a dictionary, it talks about codes, which it is a code that you need to know to support your child. But originally for me, it was the B-boy cipher. You know, when I used to grow up and I used to see the ciphers, I would always think each dancer, each artist is building off of the next one. They're always, it's always leveling up their game. So for me, the parent and cipher is a space for Black parents to level up their game, share what they know so that each one of us can be better. Separate, we're vulnerable. Separate, we're basically taken advantage of. Therefore, our kids are taken advantage of. But together, we're a power. So that's why I chose the parent and cipher on the show. I always ask people to drop like their favorite song that makes them happy. Um, Old school, new school. So, you know, that's why I came with the Parent and Cypher, the name, why I came up with the group. Um, and it's just propelled me because of my kids. Um, my kids were diagnosed maybe like second grade, but I have a daughter who was diagnosed at ninth grade. But the whole time I kept asking questions, like, it's not making sense. They gave me like auditory processing. You know, I, where can I get her tested for that? I ended up at the um, ENT. Then he tells me another test, which is a neuropsychological evaluation. You know, we go get that. We go back to the school. And they're like, mm, nah, I don't think this joint is right. <laughs> right. So this is when we talk about the difference between who you're getting to test your child. But that's a different conversation. They paid for the test because she went to a private school because that is one of my areas of genius. Send my kids to private school for free. So I'm, I'm going through all these things and then COVID hits and I'm like, yo, the whole time I'm going through it, I'm like, people need to know. So I wrote a book called Not My Child because when they told me that my child had ADHD, but most importantly, when they said my child had autism, I was like, nah, no, he don't. So I called a book, Not My Child. It's the Amazon bestseller. When COVID hit, I was like, you know what? I want to create a podcast and bring people in who provide the services. So that gives parents a deeper understanding of what to expect and hold people accountable for. It's award-winning. And it's been mentioned like twice on Feedspot for top like single mom podcast and top black family podcast. And it's listened to internationally. I'm proud of it. Uh, most importantly, I've made so many connections with people in the industry. And it's just, it's, it's, just been, it's been real fun, especially during COVID because I had to feel alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's important. And I appreciate you sharing all of that about the podcast and your why. Um, you know, there are a lot of podcasts with some some deep intention and and a real why that's really connected to something that's that's very serious and dear uh, to them. And this is no different. This is uh, for your for your kids, but also for other parents and for yourself. So you would say I, I would assume that you've grown inside of the podcast and interviewing folks. Tell us about a little bit about that, and and if there's anyone that stands out in particular that you were able to interview um, that really helped to shape or help you to kind of keep, continue to move forward and know that you're that you really are in the right place at the right time. So, okay, so as a parent, right? Because you know, one of the things is what I realized was that I was still living through the past of my parents and my grandparents' experience, right? So, you know, when we talk about black, white people, we say they. They this, they that, you know, and I had a, a podcast guest, Jamia Drummond Bay, and she said, who are they? And I was like, you know, you know, she's like, well, why are you calling them they? 
instead of calling them who they are, she was like, you're empowering them. You're, you're letting them get away with the things that they do by, by not naming them. And that was very powerful for me. It made me realize that some of the ways that I was like raising my kids was still under that umbrella. Um, so I learned to like kind of relax. So, you know, my son was doing virtual school and he was like, hello, uh, how come we don't have any black books? And I'm literally cringing because when I was growing up, you don't, you don't ask questions like that. You just let it be. That's just how it is. And I'm like, old me probably would have been like, dang, dang, right behind, behind. <laughs> but before I, I let him go, and it was like a big exhale for me. And to watch him like shine, he wasn't rude. He wasn't, he wasn't mean. He was had a kid's curiosity. How come we don't see any black book? And she was like, we'll get some. But he didn't let it go. He was like, you know, like with uh, Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, Malcolm X, like all the people that he knew, he mentioned. And that made me very proud. And like one of the biggest things that came out of doing this podcast is awareness. Um, awareness of my parenting and where some of the, the actions come from. They're not even mine. They're just, they're from my parents and their parents, which has made me really reflect on my family's Black experience. Um, and even when I interact with my kids, I have my son on a podcast about communicating with your child. You know, yo, he and he went in. He went in so hard about like, as a parent, how we think we are connecting with our kids when we really not right? I, it's made me better parent with connecting to my kids, as well as one of the things I used to always say, seeing your child beyond the diagnosis. When people are servicing your child, that's all they see. We, your, my job as a parent is to make you see them, not their diagnosis. Pull them out, because what the system wants to do is to push your child into that caricature of a diagnosis you know ADHD oh you're a black boy and you have it that means you're hyperactive just overall I would say that talking to people have expanded it they've also made me more a better advocate as well as make me realize I'm not crazy a lot of times when you're dealing with people in in niches and special specialties and you say something you're kind of like, oh, is it me? Yeah. So I would say that's that's it. Yeah, something that I think is a huge benefit uh, to interview style podcasts is because you're you're meeting folks that you uh, are becoming aware of day after day. It's not like you you can start with your list, right, and then yeah. it, it continues to grow, and then as you continue to tackle different conversations. Um, you want to learn more. You want to you want to get the next person in that can that can lend um, more insight or expand on a topic that was kind of touched on but didn't really go into. So you're in your third season of Parenting Cipher, going into the fourth. Is that mm -hmm. yes? All right. What are you most looking forward to as you uh, step into the next season? So I'm looking forward to stepping into my greatness. So when I started the podcast, it was about other people. Um, it was just, you know, the first one, I don't even think I even had a lot of solos. Um, second one, it evened out, you know. Third one, yeah. But this one, it's like I now know what my conversation is with my secret juices. So I'm excited about that. Um, I already did my guest recordings. So I'm excited for people to hear about them because they're like, so dope, you know, in different ways. You know, I have someone on the show who just talked about being a mom and she has a podcast that talks about being a mom. I have someone on the show talking about self-confidence. And, you know, we're talking about all the different ways, not only about how you can work on your self-confidence, but how you build self-confidence in your children. Um, I have a brother on the on the um on the show who just came out with a book and it's talking about um raising confidence in, in black boys. 
that conversation is just dope because he, he's utilizing a, a method I ain't never heard of, right? I'm like, so tell me more about that. I have a parent comes on and she talks about mindfulness. And, you know, for all of us who know what mindfulness is, it's sometimes it's, it's easier than freaking meditation. I tell you that. But the way that she talks about mindfulness is different. Um, and I left, I left that conversation feeling like, oh yeah, I'm knocking out the mindfulness. You know, we had a real flow because I touch on a lot of things in my life, but I was like, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my conversation. I'm looking forward to people hearing my guests because, you know, starting out this year, these are the things that people are like, hmm, what am I, what's my word for the year? <laughs> <laughs> what's that one thing I want to do or embody? And I feel like the guests that came on the show for this fourth season, they're each one a word. Yeah. You you have um, some uniqueness to your, your show in a way that even though you've talked about the diagnoses, um, it's, it's an important conversation for um, all parents and specifically Black parents in, inside the school system from kindergarten to, to 12th, um, it, it resonates across the board because there are a lot of issues and a lot of ways that um, our children specifically get uh, stigmatized. Um, they, they seem to know everything about our children and know nothing at all. And, um, and, and so it really is something that I've, I've enjoyed listening to myself, even being an empty nester. I don't have any of these these <laughs> concerns anymore, thankfully. And I don't know how any parent worked through COVID because my child would have failed out. We would have just, <laughs> we just would have sat back for two years until we reopened. But, um, but you know, it's, it's a really, really great podcast. And one of the things that's, that's kind of unique about your, your podcast, and I want you to touch on it because I think some people may be wanting to get into this, but you have a good problem to have. And that's that people send you stuff that they want you to read, review, you know, listen, use the service, use the product or what have you. How do you think that came about? And how do you manage that aspect really briefly? So I used to be a podcaster first. And I took, um, her name is Jasmine. And I took her class. And she was, she basically tells you how to set yourself up for affiliates, but also to set yourself up you know, for people to send you samples. So I set it up and they send me, people send me a lot of things. When it comes to books, sometimes I'm like, yo, send me the book. Sometimes the book is good, sometimes it's not. Um, with my books, usually what I'll do is I will put it in my blog. Um, I did have a guest on my show from Miha Books. Um, they, they're not authors, but they sell diverse books it was a dope conversation but when it comes to things sometimes we use them sometimes we don't um I also have to look at the company I don't want to promote anyone that I feel like is not for my community so that's my filter for that but yeah I mean it's been hot I've never I've never had any time where I didn't ha had to look for a guest necessarily um, and apparently it must be known now that I tend to put black people on my podcast because this last season I had more than when I first started. All right. I want you to take an opportunity. Thank you for that. And um, I really um, I, th I think that this conversation, well, I know this conversation is definitely going to support a lot of parents. Um in the room and watching, but um, think that the work is important, right? And um, I say that people are gonna see me say that quite a bit in here, but it's because I really believe that one, we are doing important work whenever we are, we are willing to um, voice our experiences um, and our perspective uh, from, from the things that we are, we're going through um, and, and how we're living in this world. It's important that we are able to um, share our insight and our knowledge with the next person uh, because it because it helps accelerate somebody else's process. So mm -hmm. I do think this is important work. I appreciate it so much. If is there any other podcast that you would say that influenced you or inspired you 
um, with the parent decipher. It's a podcast about education and it talks about New York City in the 1950s, how they were excluding um, black students from um, special programs, like the programs for honors and um, what is it? And magnet programs and stuff like that. Right. Okay. But that influenced me because I was kind of like, the main part of that conversation was that we don't know what we don't know because we're not part of those circles and we're not having those conversations. We're thinking that the school has our kids all the way when they don't. They have their kids because let's be real. The system was created for white people from the moment they said on the, in the Constitution, um, for the people, by the people, we weren't the people. Okay, so whenever it comes to education, it's the same thing present. Our kids are not a consideration for real. So they create schools within schools around our kids. They create programs and amongst programs for our kids. So it, it was kind of like when I was listening to it, I was like, oh, this is deep. Oh, we need to have a community and space where we have access to all of the education, but all of the things that we need to know to be better advocates for our kids. You're almost in your fourth year, which congratulations. That's a, that's a big deal because people don't make it that far. <laughs> How people don't make it that far. And it's not without its challenges, right? And so what would you say to, to folks who are either aspiring or considering um, giving up with their podcast? Um specifically when you know that what you are doing actually matters and it will uh, support the next person, you know, but if, when you keep going. Well, for aspiring podcasters, I would say, don't overthink it. You know, the first thing to do is just to do it, you know, get your mic, you know, get your, get the idea of what your purpose is because all of us have a lot of things that we can talk about, but what's that one thing that the universe is calling you to talk about now, right? Um, and go ahead and just do it, right? Get your support. If you, the type of person needs more information, you know, of course, Apples and Audios, you now have WAP Podcasters, you have the Black Podcast Association, Um where you'll be welcomed. And most importantly, you know, you're going to be encouraged because we want you to go out there and record. And if you are creative, which you are because you're, if you're here, right? Um, I would say I wish I would have known to create my assets. And anyone who's new, an asset means, you know, your, your Canva image, like your images, your transcripts, you know, your show notes, the same time that you're recording after, like do it after, um, because it's like a one and done, you know, it's a little bit hard for me to kind of come back later. Um, so that's the one thing I would say for newbies, for people who have a podcast and you shake your boots, podcasting has a lot of, you know, pieces, you know, you got the audio piece, you know, you have the transcription piece. And sometimes you just like, I just want to get on the mic. But it's all the other pieces that's keeping you from the mic. Because instead of like really being happy, like those pieces that are not yours, and I really mean that, can become toxic, which will keep you away from the thing that you love the most. So those are the things that you need to figure out how to outsource or what could you do instead of it doing yourself. For me, it's social media. And it wasn't until I had attended this uh, information session about toxic productivity, right? And uh, social media was checking all the boxes, checking, checking, it was checking, check, 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 right? Because um, I hate it. But one thing about toxic productivity is that you, how hard you can lean into something that you hate because it's, it's necessary per se. That's the thing that I am like, I have to let go as well as like all the channels, you know, ask yourself, are all the channels beneficial to your audience? Yes, you want people to listen. So some, some gotta be clutch, like Instagram, right? Facebook, but as you start growing, you might wanna decide like, 
Who am I talking to right now? And where are they? I know for a fact, Facebook ain't my place. Why? Because when I get on Facebook, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I forget why I get on that joint. I'm be real. So I know my people are not there. <laughs> my people are not there. Instagram, yes. Pinterest, yes. Not so much on Facebook because I lose them. So if you have to pick one, pick one. If you have to outsource it, outsource it. But if you feel yucky, and when I'm not talking about doing it, because we'll do it, we'll grind, we'll hustle, but you're tired. It's that piece you're not looking forward to. It's that piece you have to make yourself do. And you're like, all I want to do is get on the mic. Like that's the piece you're going to have to figure out how to get rid of because it's going to be the thing that keeps you away from sharing your information and touching the people that need to be touched. Like literally I've been off the mic for months and it only was like recently I figured out why, because I'm like, I get on the mic, then I got to do show notes and then I got to do images and then I got to do these posts and I don't want to do that. So I'm just not going to talk. So that would be, you know, for people who like, ah, I want another season, but I'm not sure, you know, check in with yourself. Why is it? Is it that you don't have anything to say? Or is it that you're not looking forward to the other pieces? If it's the other pieces, figure out how to let, let that shit go. <laughs> word, word. No, I, I appreciate that. And I it's really important. Um, I know that's what keeps me out of doing a lot of stuff. Cause, you know, I'll I talk about myself a lot and and you know, I'm a person who will rise to the occasion, but I will avoid the occasion at all costs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to handle my business, but I'm going to try not to have no business to handle if possible. So um, so thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I do know that, you know, you're one of the, the rare people who have been to all four mm-hmm. years right now, all four Afros and Audio Podcast Festivals. Um, there's a reason for that, too. And the reason is that, you know, we you're my oldest friend and I may not be your oldest friend, but you mine. <laughs> so anyway, we've been hanging since college. And you're always there to support me and contribute to what what it is that we're creating. But talk to folks a bit about um, your experience with Afros and audio and how, if any way, it's impacted the way in which you approach podcasting or even feel, I guess, inside of a community, which is what we're building and what we've created. So when I went to the first one, I wasn't a podcaster. No, here's the funny thing. I was a podcaster, but I didn't know I was. Because I had something called um, Alexa Briefings on Anchor. And I recorded every day, five days a week for a couple of months. And it was actually when I was talking to somebody at the first one, they were like, but you have a podcast. I don't, but you do. And it made me feel some kind of way, you know, like, what, for real? You know, so I sat on that for a while. Always been an active participant and in the events you know it's a community even if you don't know people it's a welcome it's a hug um virtually or even in person I like that you know when you come into the space people are waiting there to catch you right you know give you information and it's actually through ANA um I learned actually how to get into podcasting like what's the best mic you know how do you record um there's other pieces I learned later but that was enough to get me started and then the other thing with this last one so the first one was in person you know two virtually and then this one last year was in person and to see people that I have been like literally interacting with virtually um in different spaces and a a spaces you know, literally may want to give people a hug. I'm not a hugger at all, right? Um, with the fact that I brought my kids and people were nice to my kids. I know that may sound weird to some people, but sometimes people look at kids as they don't have to acknowledge them. You know, my son was at the front. He was like, hey, you here to watch or you here to speak, Right. And he was interacting with them. And trust, my son don't really interact with people. I was like, what? And he was running down the hall. You want a yellow band because you want to you wanna hug people? Or do you want this band because you want to dap, right? And 
I was just like in awe and I let him be and, and, you know, everybody received him well. My, my son came and he was over there and, uh, with Cube. He was eyeing their shirts, texting me. Can you cash at me some money? Because when they come back, they only have one hoodie. And I end up like, yo, man, my son is stalking y'all. She was like, for real? Like, it introduced me to him. And she gave him a t-shirt and some um, bracelets. Man, he was like, yo, when are we going back to the next one, man? Because I've got freebies. They have absolutely no idea. That's not how it really works in the real world. But this is like an Afro and audios festival, which is community. And what does community do? We nurture our kids as well as we nurture ourselves. And, you know, the first one I was there, it was dope. I've been with for four years. This last one was more dope. It might be because I had my kids. It might not have been. It might be because we've been virtual for two years. But each session was dope. Like to the point, people were like coming to the table. Like, I mean, like both of them are good. Which one you think I should go to? Dude, I don't know. I don't know. You're going to have to make a choice. Like, did you upgrade? Are you like, <laughs> like, I don't know how to support you right now, but you need to make a choice. You know, I mean, like, word, word. I'll word. always come, even yeah. if I'm not in the back. <laughs> Word up, word up. Well, I appreciate your contribution to Afros and Audio for this long. And your youngest son, who I consider all your children, my family, even made it into the the article with Simple Cast and Hat Swiss. Um, he was mentioned in there because he was. He he really showed up and um and all of them, even uh your daughter was there as well. And so we had a really good time and and I was happy to know that they enjoyed it as much as they did because we we both thought they were going to be bored out their damn mind. oh yeah we thought they was going to tap out <laughs> it was going to be like when are we leaving um but they didn't do that and they were all just with it and and excited for the next one and i think that's the testimony of the representation that was in the room and also um you know what they experienced that it was a a space where they felt comfortable and um and that's important. So, so thank you for for being there, and thank you for for bringing them this time. Um, you know, they they welcome all the time because you know they are kids. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, they're <laughs> going to be there already. They're like, where is it? Where is it going? Yeah. Word up, word up. So, anything else that you want to promote before we end and tell people where they can find Parenting Cipher and where they can find you? Um. So right now, I want to promote my book, Not My Child. It's on Amazon. And listen to the upcoming season that will be out mid-February. But in the meantime, listen to the podcast because there's something on there for everyone. Like, even if you don't have kids, you got a niece, you have a nephew, like this is information that's going to help your whole family. And if you decide to have a kid one day, it'll help you then too. <laughs> and you can find me um, on Instagram, Facebook, The Parent and Cypher. And on the website is theparentingcypher.com as well. All right. That's what's up. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, and all of that information will be in the description for anybody who uh, wants to listen to the podcast or find the book or uh, connect with you. All right. All right. Thank so you. I'm going to close this out and just stay right there. All right. I want to give a big thanks to our Afros and Audio and Black Podcast community for supporting our commitment for community and collaboration. If you'd like to join the Black Podcasters Association, the link will be in the description below. And if you want to join us at the fifth annual Afros and Audio Podcast Festival, visit bit.ly slash AFAU FAQ, which will also be in the description. Follow us on all social media channels at Afros and Audio. And thanks again, Jeannie, for being a part of Afros and Audio's first ever Black History Month interview series. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right.